Hello, Greg here. So today I want to do just a very quick lesson on a pentatonic shape that I find really helps open up the neck and gets us sort of out of those blocky single position pentatonic scales that we're taught pretty much right off the bat. There are three things that I really like about this shape. The first thing is that it's only gonna require our index finger and our ring finger. The second thing is that it helps us move laterally, horizontally, and gets us out of, again, these single position box shapes like our normal minor pentatonic that everyone knows. The third thing is that we're actually gonna be thinking about it in terms of the notes in the scale that we're playing and not just numbers of frets on strings. We have to be musically aware of what we're doing and this is really gonna help us start to develop that. There are two pieces of information that we're gonna to need to know before we get rolling on this, so let's cover those quickly. The first is what happens when we move a shape across the neck and we bridge the G to B string gap. Just remember that as we do that, the shape gets exaggerated by one fret. For instance, if we take our power chord, our open fifth, and we move that shape across the neck, when we get to the G to B string gap, instead of two frets, it becomes three frets. There we go. <laughs> Again, after that, it goes back to normal. It's just that one gap. The second thing that we do need to know is how the pentatonic scale is actually formed. In this case, we are looking at the major pentatonic and is derived from the major scale. No matter where you play the major scale, no matter what shape you're using, it is a combination of what we call whole steps or two frets and half steps, which is the distance of one fret. The pattern of the major scale is whole, whole, half, whole, 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 half. If I was to lay that out just on the E string, it would look like this. Again, these are distances. So you play the root first, and then you go whole, whole, half, whole, 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 half. So. Again, it doesn't matter what shape you're using. As long as you're playing whole, whole, half, whole, 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 half, it is the major scale. One thing I do wanna say just to clarify that last statement is when we're talking about whole steps and half steps, we're talking about the distance between the sounding pitch. So if you play the fifth fret on the E string and play the open A string, those are going to be the same pitch, even though it is a different fret on a different string. Therefore, if you want to move a half step up from this note, this is A right here on the fifth fret of the E string. If you wanna play a half step up from that, you can either play one fret higher or find the equivalent of this note on the next string up. And that would be right here on the first fret. So both of these notes are going to be a half step above this note right here on the fifth fret of the E string. So let me go boop, half step, and this is also a half step because the sounding pitch is one half step above the original note. Now the pentatonic scale, pentatonic five notes, comes about when you take the two most tense notes out of the major scale. This is the fourth scale degree and the seventh scale degree. Not only does this get rid of the half steps, but it gets rid of the tritone, which is our biggest piece of harmonic tension in the scale. <laughs> what this leaves us with is one, two, three, five, six. And then we start over on one, two, three, five, six. If you're a solfege person, it's do, re, mi, sol, la, sol, mi, re, do. Those low E's are getting tough. Now the shape that I'm gonna show you, the pentatonic panhandle, looks like this. And we're gonna move up to G major, or use the G major pentatonic scale, just so that you can actually see the shape in full and we don't use any open strings. <laughs> We are in G. So the shape is gonna look like this. 
One, two, three, five, six, one, six, five, three, two, one. Um, I typically slide on the way up with my index finger on the way down just because of the phrasing I like to slide with my ring finger. It's not going to make a huge difference either way. One, two, three, five, six, one. So as we can see, once we get back up to that one or the root as we can call it, one, two, three, five, six, one, our shape just starts over again. One, two, three, five, six, one. Because of this, no matter where you find a root, anywhere you find the note G, you can start this shape on that fret. Or if I wanted to go, or if I was up here. The important thing though is making sure that you aren't sliding around on the wrong note. So actually speak the scale degrees out loud as you're practicing this. You don't have to sing along like I do, but at least make sure you're saying them. One, two, three, five, six. One, two, three, five, six. One, two, three, five, six. Now again, notice how I crossed from the G to the B string that it is moved up a fret. One of the things I love about this is at any given time, you pretty much have a stack of three strings where you can just use two fingers and not worry about sliding. One of the best ways to practice this is to just go on YouTube or something and just find a drone that is in whatever key you want to practice it in. Play that drone, find the root note in different places, and just noodle around. Again, just make sure you're saying those scale degrees out loud so that you don't slide too early. However, if you do slide too early, in most cases, you're either just going to go to the fourth scale degree or the seventh scale degree. So you're still in key. Just make sure that you're using your ear to know when that happens so that you start to identify these scale degrees by sound and not just by fret. So let me noodle around for a second in G just so that you can hear what it sounds like. So that is it. That is the pentatonic panhandle. Let me know how this shape works for you down in the comments or if you have any other helpful knowledge for beginners starting out. Thank you for stopping by and I will see you next time.